Good evening and welcome back to the shop here in Canterbury, New Hampshire. Tonight we're going to talk about fitting drawers perfectly to an opening. I did have a number of people ask me for this specific uh, topic for a shop night live. Quite a few people commented on how nicely my drawers fit. Look how nice that slides. Now I don't have the back on and I don't have the drawer bottom in but it does fit and slide really great. And all these are flush fit. But tonight I want to show you fitting a drawer to a nice little table like this. Seems pretty intimidating the first time you do it. I know I felt intimidated first time making drawers or cutting dovetails, but um, that was one of the secrets I, I've shared with you that I was so happy to find out from Pug Moore down in Rocky Mount, like how he fit the drawers and how he got them to slide so nicely. It begins with having a parallel opening. We've done a full video course of making this entire table. So what I'm about to show you is kind of wrapped inside that. We also have full size drawings for this table. Now I'm not going to show you with the top on, but this is the case. So in that video, and I, I talk about the assembly of the whole base and trust me, it was made so that the front uh, dividers here from the shoulder, that point that's butting into the leg, that shoulder is the same length as the back shoulder to shoulder. Okay, so exactly the same length front to back. So you can imagine, once that's all clamped up, you've got a parallel shot from the inside of this leg to the inside of that leg. Now, because of the way this is constructed, you see the sides are only 7 eighths and the legs are inch and 3 eighths. So you got about a half inch offset here, which if you're going to have a drawer slide into this opening, you have to fill that void in order for the drawer to track nicely. So I've already done that. That is actually easiest to do while the table is still apart. So I first glue up the sides and then while the sides are glued up I would make that piece approximately a half inch thick and I try to get it just the right thickness so it feels flush front and bottom, back on the inside of that leg filling up that space. But if it's not you can just skim it with a nicely tuned plane to get it nice and straight between. You can even put a straight edge on there and see that it's flush front to back, which I did on these. And then I glued it up across the front and across the back. Now, when I glued it up, I checked for square. And of course, all of that stuff is in the video if you want to know. But that's a key issue, a component of getting a drawer to slide really well in an opening is to begin with a good opening, a good parallel opening, because you want to make this drawer piston fit, true front to back. So that's what we're going to do. Now that we've got this filled up, we need, I call these the drawer guides. You know, you could call them filler pieces, but it's basically guiding the drawer along the side. So those fill in that void in this case. And now we need the drawer runner for the drawer to actually slide on. So the way I do that on this is I like to use some hardwood runners. I've got these pieces of oak ready to go. And I'm going to set those in here into the opening. We want those to be flush with the front divider, but we actually want to get it so that it's, if we bring a little square down and plunk down right on the top of that divider, we'll bring that up so it sits right against that square. Then we know that that front edge is in perfect plane with that front divider. Now here's one of the good things about building a, a table like this. You don't have to worry about expansion and contraction of the sides because the sides are going in the same direction as our guide and our runner. So what I'm going to do is put a little glue on there and get that tacked in there in the front. And then I'll show you what we'll do from there. All right, I'm going to use a little of this Gorilla Glue. We want something that's going to grab quickly. This sets fast. So we're going to... Hey Tom, just a question from Bill. Is there any particular reason the timber for the void fill 
is not the same as the main timber used. It could be the same, but it's general rule, all of the interior wood that's meant to fit out the inside and all that is, is generally considered secondary wood. And so it's common practice to use a lesser expense wood and something that works easily. I'm using poplar because it's commonly used as secondary wood around here. I'm not sure what you have there, but if there's a more common, less expensive wood that's nice to work, has good properties, it's fine to work on the inside. It's not seen. So we consider it secondary wood where your primary wood is really, this is more expensive around here, cherry wood for the case. But that's a great question. Uh, it's especially pertinent with the chest of drawers because all of that, and you'll see more secondary wood as I go through this. All right, so I've got that little bead of glue on there and I'm gonna set it right up here. We'll get it right along the bottom edge here. I forgot that this is better with two hands. I'm holding it there and I'm gonna take my pin nailer and shoot a pin right into my chest. Here we go. Okay, that's pretty nice. All right, so that's right about, that. that is flush. Rather than squaring it back, I'm not sure that's gonna give me the right read off of the front of this leg because I had to plane them a little bit. I'm gonna read off the top of the rail, which is flush with the top of the leg. And so I'm just gonna set it true right along that rail, the same distance from this rail front to back. So that's gonna give me a parallel uh, shot right along the drawer runner. So I want to read it right at the front where I shot my the, that pin there. Okay, I'm setting the height. Okay, that's pretty good. Tom, um, Steve's asking, do you consider it a crime to fit a mechanical drawer slide in a piece of furniture like this? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Crime. Well, no, it's, it's not a crime, but this piece... Um, a building is meant to be more traditional, so I'm doing it in the traditional manner with, um, you know, wood parts. Okay, I expected this not to take this long, but it's okay because we're woodworkers and we're patient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it teaches you. No swearing. Oh no. Did that write up? Oh my gosh, it did. See, now, what you don't want to do okay. is what I just did. <laughs> it just wrote up before, but the good thing is I got only pin nails in there. I'm going to just pull it down a little bit. The pin nails are actually just holding it while the glue sets. Okay, that's better. I'm going to shoot another one. Let's see if I can do it without slipping this time. Okay, and now in the back, pull it down just a touch. There she is right there. Oh, actually, I'm gonna just use my square to hold it. So you could put clamps on it as well, but any chance you get to shoot the pin nailer. <laughs> Let me try laying it down. You know, I've never tried that. Let me see. Maybe we a new way. I love that. Hey, look at that. It's already in better position. I'm not sure if I can do the square thing, though. I put a little too much glue on last time, which causes it to slide around a little more. But just one small bead. Okay, now we're going to bring the bead and the piece in again. All right, so now I'm on there. To get this to work really well, you want to lay it on its side like this. Thanks for the idea. Andrew. Who was that? Andrew? Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. That pin went its own way. I'm not falling for it again, Dean. What? Said they used the white rabbit glue. <laughs> it's the white rabbit. It's the gorilla rabbit. <laughs> what color was that gorilla? Um, that is the thing. When a third um, and possibly a fourth hand are needed, then use clamps to hold your square in position. My goodness. All right, well, this should be a fast operation. It really goes. Uh, Evan's asking what a non nailer method to fasten the runner would be. It would be like everyone's saying just, just a little glue, let it start to grab, 
and make sure it's not sliding around and you could use spring clamps or quick grip clamps are actually my preferred method in this because you can get get those on with one hand and sort of like the spring but the spring can tend to pull it in a direction the only problem with this is I, I do have to stand it up for the second one because I can't get the square position okay there we go These poor people have to hear about all our production issues it's okay all right now i'm going to check this one in the back now you just cross your hands like this oh yeah all right beautiful see how easy that is all right so that's nice all that's done i had one pin nail shot down and is poking out a little bit down there but I'll snip that off and tap it away. So that's beautiful. I can see a tiny bit of squeeze out. My putty knife, I'm just gonna take that out of the groove. Other Rich side. is asking if the Gorilla Glue needs moisture to set. Um, no, it, it has its own moisture. It's uh, water-based, so it goes on there and it's, it's fine. I used that because it specified it was quick setting. All right, so now we've got that. Now our drawer will run in there fine, but we have, we also want to make sure when the drawer comes out, it doesn't drop down. You know how you have that sound sometimes? You're, you're gonna, a drawer, a chest of drawers, you bring it out just so far and it tips down because there's nothing to stop it interior, on the interior. There's a void, a vacant space above the drawer. So what we want to do is put in the pieces that will support above the drawer. And I'm going to double this up. So this is going to go into that little recess. It's going to fit in there on the top this time, right between these two. I just shot that with my um, shooting board until it fit right in there nicely. And it's the same thickness as my front divider. So I'm gonna set it just flush with the side. And you see how it's wider than just that half inch this time. It's about 5 eighths wider. And I doubled up, I've got some screw holes. So this is gonna double up as a way to fasten the top. So the top, the grain's gonna run this way. We have a little room for play in those screws. So It'll be not only the kicker, is the technical word for this. I used to call them just tip downs because it prevented the drawer from tipping down, but uh, kicker's fine. Now, I usually use spring clamps for this, so I've got to grab those. These don't have to be on that long because we're going to use that quick set glue. And let me just put a thin line here. Don't need a lot. This will hold in there beautifully. All right, so I'm just going for flush with the top. And I'm going to use these Bessie spring clamps. I like these kind with the flat pad. They tend not to pull the thing out of position as much as the non-pivoting pad type. Okay, that feels good and flush. Set another one. All right, and then... Uh, Lastly, that one in the back. So this is pretty quick to fill out the interior once you have your parts, size and all. I have those holes are drilled at an angle so that you can run them into the top. Okay, nice and flush on the top. Let's get the other side. Just again, another bead right along here. I made sure the, the screw holes are going in the right direction. Set it right in there again i'm using a different type of timber this is a four timber table actually coming the cherry we've got cherry poplar drawer guides white oak drawer runners and i'm using white pine for my kickers all right i put a heavier bead on there i wasn't quite as conscientious while i was putting it on there so i've got a little more squeeze out on the top 
hardly any inside, but. All right, that's looking good. Let me just clean a little of that glue off. Okay. And we're gonna turn our attention to fitting the drawer. Steve's curious if you prefer a hardwood uh, runner so it takes paste wax easier. So this table has little threat of, you know, dishing out the runners over time because the drawer is so lightweight. It's really not used that much either. It's not like a chest of drawers where you have a heavy drawer full of clothing or whatever. Um, but I still, in good, it's good practice to use a harder wood for that because at, when I finish, the thing that really makes the drawer slide great, uh, once you have a well-fitted drawer, is to shellac the interior. Thin coat. I put two thin coats of shellac, one to one and a half pound coat, and then lightly sand that with a fine, like, 320 grit paper, and then wax that. So the wax is technically going on the shellac. And it's going to slide so well, you'll think you were skating. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, so that is hold, holding up nicely there. And here's the drawer that I made earlier. So this is a nicely sized drawer for this opening. Already pre-drilled the knob, but it's hand cut dovetails as usual. And in a traditional manner, we'll be sliding a drawer bottom in from the back. But we're not gonna concern ourselves with the bottom. We just mainly wanna get this fitting well for tonight. And one of the keys to doing this is when I cut my parts, I'm cutting them to length so that it's a press fit when my thumbs just have to use gentle pressure to get it fit. So let's see if it fits in here um, the, from side to side. You can see it's going in, but it's tight side to side. Now, what I do also is when I'm marking for the dovetails, I set the... Uh, marking gauge which looks like this if you've never seen one so it looks like this I set it so that the knife cutting edge is a little bit wider than my side so it's gonna make a depth cut on the ends here a little bit deeper than the side is wide which adds up to after it's clamped up the pins these little triangular parts are proud I can feel them raised. They're about a 64th or so raised. Same in the front. Okay? So the nice thing about this is right now it's a pressure fit. It's a squeeze fit into the opening. But all I have to do is skim plane off those pins in the front and back, and I should get a nice tracking slide right in there. That's like a nice way where I don't even, usually I don't have to plane much at all off the sides. Once I take those off, it should be tracking nicely. Then you have to address the top and the face. So we're going to go through that process right now. So here you go. Let's see if we can, no, we got those clamps are in the way, but you can see that's a pressure fit. Let's turn it around. See how the front squeezes into this opening. See, it's just a, a nice little snug fit side to side. There's zero play, okay? So let's go ahead and skim plane those, and then we can get back to the chest. I mean, I mean the uh, table. So I'm going to set this little planing board in here in my bench. I'm going to let it overhang about three or four inches here. Use the bench dogs and come right up to it. This creates a custom bench hook for cleaning up the drawers. So I, I cut the width here just slightly narrower than my narrowest opening on whatever drawer I'm using, and then clamp it on the other end. So now I've got a nice, steady support right there. I don't have to clamp it in at all. It's right in position and I'm going to push this way. So I can do this with a number of planes. I could use a standard, but planes that really shine with end grain are low angle. So you come in at this sweet low angle and those tubes, those fibers, the end grain is coming right up. So these shear off really nicely. I got this set quite lightly. 
turn my bench so you'd have a better angle. That's great. Thank you. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just extend a tiny bit. I just freshened up this edge before you came over tonight. <laughs> and uh, it, I didn't set up the plane quite well. Oh, that's better. So, see, I'm pretty flush here. I was hoping that was proud a little because I've got a little burn mark there, which I can get off. Oh, there it goes. All right, now I can feel, whoops, a little more in the middle. There, took the burn mark off. So now, just a touch more here, and those are flush. Now I can do a little more, but that's all I want to do for now, is just get it flush. Then I can spin her around, and I just got to get these, these little poplar ones. So this drawer is made up of our primary wood for the front, and poplar for the secondary wood. Do you know why we use poplar? Local and stable it's and a, cheaper. And it's a... Very popular. It's a popular choice. <laughs> okay, very oh, good. I'm sorry, I wasn't following you. I thought I was being tested. <laughs> no, you were doing great. Real. No, you all good answers. <laughs> And I knew you were going to tell me it was... I, I should know something by now. All right. <laughs> You're just not demented enough yet. All right, so now I'm going to hit this end, and we're just going to clip off. It's very popular. That's funny. Never it's gets a... old. Never gets old. It doesn't. <laughs> Are you sure about it that? It says a lot about us that it doesn't get old. <laughs> okay. I don't want to disappoint anybody and not say it. Oh, you know what else is nice about this? Is they get flush, but they also get dark and clear, and you really see how nice the joint is. Mm. Yeah. It's so crisp. That glue filled it up nicely. Evan's curious what you think of white pine for drawer sides. Love it! <laughs> Evan, I love it. I mean, it's really nice. I would even use it on a little table like this. The only... It's a wonderful working wood, and I go into that in the Shaker Chester Drawers course. I really talk a lot about white pine because I used it for one of the first times extensively inside a chest as the secondary wood. It's a wonderful planing wood. It's so agreeable. It's so nice to cut your dovetails with. Wonderful first kind of wood to cut hand-cut dovetails because it's quite forgiving and easy on the sawing. And uh, the other great attribute is it's extremely stable. Uh, white pine is the most stable wood. The only downside is it's soft. So as a drawer runner, I mean, as a drawer side, I'm a little susceptible. Uh, suspicious it wouldn't hold up. That's why on that chest I edged the bottom edges with, so you know, the hard maple. So a hardwood to edge it. All right, I'm just going to clean off. Thanks for not waiting for me on that one. These are slightly proud in the back. I'll just do them all up right now. Now, I couldn't, I didn't fit this drawer in the opening when I glued it up. So I just checked it for square by measuring the diagonals that they were equal when I made this drawer. And I did the same when I glued up the table. I checked the diagonals. But there could be a little discrepancy between the two. And that's where this custom fitting comes in. You're going to get it beautifully custom fit. Oh, that's nice. And right. it's asking, how much of a reveal do you leave on the top and sides of the drawer for expansion and contraction through the seasons? Great question, Evan. Um, on the sides, negligible. I just want it to slide nicely because it's, expand it's not expanding and contracting along the opening. Okay? So let's see how it fits, and then I'll address your other question. We'll get addressed as we go along. So here we are. We've got it in the opening, and 
something. Hold on a second. Could be a little bit high. Yeah, okay. I'm binding on the top right over here a little bit so I can feel it high. I'm going to just skim that off. My side is actually a little proud here and here, so I'm going to address that right now. Don't usually, but if you have to, to get it in there, why not? So see, you can just use your block plane, bring that down, take it easy so you don't overshoot the front like I almost did. I'm going to have to take a little off the front top edge anyway, so... Okay, that's flush now. Let's see about the other side. Yeah, might as well hit that while we're here. So we'll start out with the sides flush with the top. So with a nice little narrow drawer like this, it's only three and a quarter inches high. The expansion and contraction will be very small seasonally. You see that drawer front is riffs on too, so it's not going to move a lot. And it's just not a big issue here, but I will probably leave no more than a 30 second for expansion and contraction on the top because it's not going to, we're coming right out of the humid days, so it's going to get drier and um, things are going to want to, uh, shrink up more and then in the next summer it'll expand but not more than three thirty se more than 30 seconds okay ready I'm gonna take these off I think we're okay with that okay as it goes back in I'm feeling it binds slightly so I've got to take a little more off the sides I want you to see the whole process whether we get to do every little bit or not, we'll see. But you can come right around. This way. It's nice just to have a stop to push into. Okay, now we can get the bottom. The bottom edge, we want to make sure the front isn't hanging down, but I'm going to go, I'll give it a few swipes across the bottom. Now, one thing with the bottom is, this is going to be the leading edge. You don't want that sharp edge digging in, so we're going to roll it or ski tip it down so we have this soft little roundedness and it's going to actually slide nicely that way. Let's get the other side here. And again, ski tip it. And let's go across the front just to make everything parallel here. That cleans everything up nicely in plane. All right, let's see how she, she fits now. Okay, we know we've planed off the pins on the sides. We'll get a nice flow right in there. Wow. That fits nice. Just the, no the noise of it. So wow. Nice. You know what's, it's still a little, getting a little snug in the back. Sometimes if you get your runners rising too much, you'll get that. Okay, I can see. Well, it's open like this on the top. I can't, I can't wiggle it up and down. A little on the right, but not really any on the left. So I'm going to plane a little more off. I didn't leave much tolerance at all. <laughs> look at this. It's like, look how snug it is. It's on there, and it's right up to the top. So we got to get more off this to allow for expansion and contraction there. And just to get it to slide a little better. It's a little snug right back here. So let me go ahead and get that going. I'm going to bring my bleed out a touch more so I can take it off a little faster now that I know what the issue is. Grant's asking if you radius the tops of the sides, soften, soften them. 
Um, you can. I usually don't. I, I just break the edges here. But a lot of the drawers over at the Shaker Village that I looked at um, that are 18th, um, around in the 1800s, they are, the tops of the drawer sides are radius. And I think it just makes a softer drawer, but I usually just break the edges nicely. All right, so we've done a little bit there. Let's see how it looks. It's gonna probably still be pretty. Oh, but now look how she slides, okay? So now I'm not getting any more of that binding. Nice. I could tweak that a little more. The opening, I can see that I'm a little up here. I have a very slight opening here. This is a close tolerance. But before I fit that reveal and mess around with that anymore, I'm gonna set my stops in the back because I wanna make sure that this face is in plane with the front. So, like I said, when I glued up the case or the, the frame, I checked it for square here when I clamped it up and I did the same with the drawer, checking for square. So hopefully, you know, in the best of both worlds, it goes in and it matches up perfectly. <laughs> but it's wood and there's usually a slight discrepancy one way or the other. So when I, this goes in, if it tracks in smoothly, I can feel it's flush here and it's raised slightly over here, probably a 64th. Um, but sometimes it's out as much as a 16th. Some get weird, but that's no problem because you're gonna just plane it off. It's slightly a parallelogram, so. But to do this now, I gotta set the stops and I'm gonna put those in the back here. Now to do this, I like to take the block plane and put it into, you can use a larger plane too, but I'll just use this because I got it right here. I'm gonna set it facing up. I've got the top and I checked the back. I already pre-cut some pieces to use as stops. All right, so I can see the gap back there. It's pretty thin. It's, I'm gonna use the thinner ones. Let's see here. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty close. But this one, let's see about the other side. All right, that's gonna be close, but all right. So I wanna set one at a time. And this is like, if I just drop it down, that's, that's probably fine. I'm a little proud here, so I wanna skim this off. So this, you know, planing a little piece like this is difficult. That's why we put our plane in here. You can just hold it and push it. And you can't see it, but there are little shavings coming off. <laughs> here they are, they're, they're the full size of this thing. Just trust me, that's what's happening. All right, so I'm gonna do this until I'm just inching up to flush here. Ooh, that one's a little, okay, that's good. So this one is gonna sit in, I gotta give it a little more. Mike's asking why not use the uh, door bottom as the stop? Uh, because my drawer bottom is going to be solid wood and the grain is running this way. So it's expanding and contracting and it would be all over the place. It would be changing seasonally. So sometimes the drawer would be out, sometimes it would be back. Now the, the reason I'm putting my stops in the back is because you see all the grain is running the same direction here. So you don't have to worry about expansion and contraction. You can set your stops at the back with a little table like this. But with the chest of drawers where the side grain here, I had to set the stops on the front rails because the sides are expanding and contracting opposite of the drawer sides. So they're there so that when the drawer goes in, it registers flush in the front, always season each season it'll be fine. With this little table, no worries. We're gonna put the stops in the back. Let's just get this done here. All right, that feels good. And this side, that's almost ready. Let's just 
Yeah, so maybe you just answer this question because Ken says, why not put the stop in front and have the door face hit against it? You could do it, but I just explained it. Yeah, you could do it in the front, but my front is pretty narrow, and this, I, did, I like to just set them in the back in this case because everything. Okay, so you. I'm getting them both to hit at the same time here. Feels pretty good. They're almost, it's almost flush now, but that's good. So once you've got them thickness, then I'm gonna just hit them with a little glue. I know you go into this um, extensively in the course, but the, the difference between, or the choice between making a, um, the twin tenon versus the single tenon option. It's a wonderful joint for joining narrow pieces like this front drawer divider to a leg it gives you a lot of strength a lot of joinery strength and uh, integrity in that way so yeah I love it for that and it helps align the joint too but there we go let me see who asked that it was a while ago yeah, we, I can't really go into that too much tonight. I'd love Jeff, to show yeah. you that, but... Uh, the benefit, I guess, you oh, twin tenon. Yeah, it's stronger, it's aligning. It's a great, strong joint for a narrow, thin piece like this to go into a leg. So you've got double tenons side by side right there. And then you can't really do the same at the top. You could, but it wouldn't be as strong. So on the top, you do a dovetail. Okay. This one's ready to go on there. Dean's asking, would you, would you put leather on the stops for such a small piece? You could, they're in the back. It would be a good idea, but I'm not doing it on this one. If you're gonna do it, you have to be factoring it in when you're fitting your drawers flush in the front. Um, you could always plane, put it on and just plane a little off the back of your drawer, you know, so the stop, or plane a little more off the front, but, um, there we go. I'll just put this on here just to hold it for a minute. They don't, they don't really want to go anywhere because I've got a good pressure fit there. So there, those are going to hit right on the end grain of the back. I'm not even going to leave those on because it's really not an issue. I can feel them wanting to stay on. Would I'm gonna cork take... work for that, Mike's asking? What's that? Cork work for that? Yeah, you could use cork as well, like the nice little 16th layer of cork on the front of those. Anything that gives you that softening of the wood cracking into it, yeah. you know? I totally uh, forgot about it here. And a lot of times I don't even do it um, with a little table like this. But it's a nice... See, so you get kind of a... Thud. It's not a crack crack, it's, it's hitting against the white pine. So now I've got that stop and I can feel the drawer front now is registering off the stop. So now is where I want to make sure that my drawer front is flush. So I'm almost flush here. I just want to take very little here. I am flush right here. So I don't want to take any off there. And then I'm a little proud right here. It starts here, so I'm going to scribble. And I'm proud across the top. Okay, so I want to plane those scribbles off. Leave this alone. Okay, here we go. I'm checking, I'm looking at the top, checking how the grain is running. So I'm going to set this again in my bench hook. And I want to plane in this direction because the fibers are exiting here. Let's get it back in there. So I'm going to use, for this I'm going to use the uh, number five. I'm just going to dial it slightly forward. You know, if you end up going too far with this, you can always, like we said, you could keep going and pad your stops. Or you can put a little piece of veneer on the stops, anything. Okay, I'm, I'm still just barely touching it up. I'm advancing the blade slightly. There we go. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to just hit this end. I want to get close to the bottom, but I don't want to take really anything off there. All right, I've got really good control because this is nicely set. The shaving's coming right out the middle. I have a slight camber on this plane. Okay. Nice, it's polished. Let's see how it fits now. It's gonna hit our stops. We check it. Ooh, it feels great right there. This end is so close. This end is a little high still right here. And right to there. Stop right there. And then I just need a tiny bit. I guess I could come a little bit across one shot there and the bottom's still good. Okay, same thing. This will be more off this end. Maiden's asking if the glue affects the size like biscuits. Does the glue expand with then shrink surrounding wood? Are we talking, what are we talking about? In particular, the, the stalks? Does the glue affect the size like biscuits? Does the glue expand then shrink surrounding wood? Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Yeah, the glue does expand, but then when it dries, it comes back because the water in the glue is going to cause expansion. That feels pretty good over here. I have just a tiny bit to go here. Right there. Let's go ahead and fix that. This is a classic place to use a plane because it's so controlled and I've got beautiful control here. Just oh, stop. Maven says with biscuits, I hear you should wait to plane it. If you get any kind of uh, any light tear, you can come in after and lightly scrape. So I'm just going to scrape lightly along the bottom. And if I feel any kind of ridge or tear, I lightly scrape prior to sanding. Then once I'm sanded, I could slightly round these edges and it'll be a gorgeous flush fit. So here we go. We hit our stops. We have a beautiful flush fit all around. Now the last thing we want to do is get our reveals correct and size the height of the drawer. Here, I want to take a little off the bottom. I'm a little up here so I can take a little more off this side. I don't care. I don't need really much of a gap on the bottom. But then we'll come across the top and get that reveal so that we're allowing for a little expansion and contraction. It's going to be contracting from now on because we're heading into winter here in the northern hemisphere. And then on the sides, I'll true up those last. Here we go, let's get out a little block. I've got this set a little more aggressively so it will do the job um, a little faster. Abu is asking, is that, one, is that one quarter saw cherry? Quarter saw and cherry, I think is what he's asking for the front. Um, it's more rift. It's kind of at an angle. So it's considered to be rift sawn. But uh, it's still, it's more stable than a plain sawn cut, but a little less than a true quarter sawn. All right, let's take a look at that bottom edge again. I was just working the bottom. Wow, that's sliding really sweet. I mean, see how there's no play side to side? Almost, it's not rattling. It's not doing it in the back either. So we've got a beautiful parallel channel. That's the key to getting that piston fit. If your back, if your drawer is narrower in the back, like you might think, oh, I'll make it slide better. I'll make it narrower across here. What happens is you get this kind of slop when it's going in and the drawer wants to twist and actually jams up more. You have to have it so close, you have to have it parallel front to back with the tolerance taken off just enough 
and there's no chance for it to dig because it's tracking so beautifully and true. This is just gorgeous slide. So once, imagine, once you get a thing called a shellac, you've sanded everything, and then some wax, it slides like a dream. Just like that shaker chest of drawers, if you were here and you've already checked that out. All right, so I'm, I'm close. I'm just a little more over here. Let's just create this with a tight tolerance right now, and we'll, um, you could do more later, but I'll just give you the crash course here. I think that'll do the bottom. That's fine on the bottom. Now let's take a little off the top. We're a little more open over here than we are over here. So we'll take a little more off this side. You know, for demonstration purposes, <laughs> you'd think I would have chosen a piece that wasn't quite as gnarly, but this one, the grain is switching a little, but it'll be beautiful with the finish on it, but it's gonna make me earn it. So then I'm gonna come down on the sides again. So whatever I do to the front, I'll do the sides to make sure that we are in plane and you should have the same kind of same kind of spacing on each side. All right. See, we've got a little play now. See, that's given our seasonal movement there. This is a small drawer, so we're not terribly worried. Okay, our reveal is starting to look better. I'm still, I'm a little closer over here. Not much, but I'll go just a little bit more. See how this direction goes. Take a little more off this side. Man. Okay, that's good. Now I'll just go down here one couple more times. This is such a beautiful custom fit. It's going to make a gorgeous drawer. And whoever opens this drawer will know somebody cared. Right? Okay, let's check it out. Ah, nice, huh? See how that reveal looks pretty sweet all the way across the top? And we were almost flat on the bottom there. I could take a touch more off the bottom to be sure that doesn't drag. And it's not dragging now. And now if we look at the corners, I'm a little open on the top here. So I want to take a little more off the bottom edge here. Let me see this other side. Same thing. So I want to take a little just a touch off the bottom on each end. So I'm gonna come back to my hook. There we go. And here we go. I'm just trying to straighten up this face here. That is the bottom. And let's go to the other side. Off the bottom again. All right, let's check it out. Oh, that looks better, huh? So see, now we've got a little more reveal. On this side, I'm just looking for that parallel reveal. Pretty darn close tiny little bit on each side but this drawer barely moves in the opening and slides beautifully so there'd be just a little more where I'd be breaking these edges uh, you could you could really break them hard if you want to do that kind of rounding thing uh, making sure I'm ski tipped back here so it just slides right in um, this is beautifully fit right now I would not need to go anymore. I've got good play for seasonal movement for a little table like this. My stops are in good position. I'm dead flush across the front. So I just sand this up, break my edges, put my knob in, and then we'd get our finish going. 
So that, my friends, is how you fit, get a drawer to fit perfectly into an opening. Are there any other questions? Remember, if you like this content, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, click that. Um, and if you want to get closer to us, head on over to epicwoodworking.com, especially if you want to check out these courses. If you're really fired up now to tackle drawers, I walk you through that very methodically to even hand cut your own dovetails. So this is a great project to start on. And then when you feel good about that, you can take on a serious intensive project like a chest of drawers. But I'd feel good about dovetails first and fitting drawers one at a time. And then you could gain a lot of experience with that chest of drawers. Any um, other I think you answered this a little bit earlier, but Mimi's asking, what approach do you use to hold bottom the bottom in place, given that the back of the drawer is shorter in width than the other sides? Very good question. Um, the drawer slides in. Um, I don't have, sorry, I don't have a bottom right now. And I put a slot in the drawer bottom, so running this way, about an eighth of an inch wide. And I run a screw in from underneath, and it goes right in that slot and into the back of the drawer. So it allows the drawer to expand and contract. The front is pinned or hide glued into the front edge so it's it's captured in the front. So all the expansion and contraction is happening in the back. So that little slot in that in the drawer bottom allows for that to expand and contract and the washer head screw keeps it pulled tight or snugly to the bottom. But you can see that much greater detail um, if you decide to tackle one of these projects. Yeah, the description has the link to that course uh, if you're interested in reading more about that. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. That was a steady, methodical <laughs> way. No parts skip, no smoke and mirrors to fit a drawer perfectly to an opening. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll check us out over at epicwoodworking.com. We'd love to see you over there and maybe sometime you'll get to come visit us here. That'd be great. Which we, we really enjoyed. On behalf of the camera lady and myself, we look forward to seeing you next week.